Yeah. Just to comprehend. Yes. That's the first step. Yes. What? Give? I don't give. You know what I'm saying? Bless who? What? Get? I gotta give? I gotta do something? Yeah, think about it. You know what I'm saying? Think about that, you know, for a minute. I gotta, look, I gotta forgive you? But I said, I would never forgive you if you did this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about sabotage, right? We should never say sabotage. No, think about it though. How many of us, how many of us want good things? We deserve it. We deserve good things. God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Now, he's not like giving you like, like blessings because you seek him. He rewards seeking him creates more knowledge, more knowledge just demands blessings in our lives. Yeah. The more you know about Christ, the more blessed you're going to be. But think about it, like, like if you desire to be married one day and have a great relationship with your wife, you've got to rid yourself of the limitations of your mind, number yeah. one. Don't go into relationships with the I wills and the I wants. Mm -hmm. Amen? No, you really got to hear me. Oh, yeah. Don't go into any relationship with the I wills and the I wants. Don't even go into your jobs with what you will and won't do. You know what that means? You know what that does? When you walk into things with expectations, you're actually setting up sabotage. You're sabotaging things when they come. I mean, you're setting up, okay, you're setting up landmines way over there, yep. and when you get it and it blows up, you wonder why. Yeah. Okay? You gotta hear me, church. Grace is the only way you can live your life and have success. Through grace. You know why? Because a relationship will last under grace. A relationship under law will just be destroyed. Yeah. Yeah. Amen? Law will destroy your relationships. You know why? Law means you, Sherry, have to live right for him because he will not handle certain things you do. So you better not do those things he can't handle or he's going to get mad at you. You did it. Now he's mad at you now. He won't even talk to you for three days until you get right. <laughs> now... You better start performing a series of events and, and, and physical signs and attributes that prove to him that you won't do the thing that you've done. Yeah. Appease him. <laughs> <laughs> prove to him that you're worthy of his grace now. Mm -hmm. Right? Relationships get really dumb when we start demanding and ex expecting. That's why I said the Lord is my shepherd. <sighs> I shall not want. Right? Yeah. Amen. I mean, think about it. How am I going to have such a relationship if I'm, if I'm throwing out what I can't handle in the beginning of our relationship? I'm only actually like actually hipping them to the understanding of what I can't handle, and now I'm aware of what I can't handle. And when they do it, guess what? I won't be able to handle it. And then what's going to happen? We're going to fight and bicker, fight and bicker. Maybe we'll survive this. Maybe we'll forgive each other. Maybe we'll divorce. Why? Because I just couldn't handle that. Right? Give grace instead. Amen. You give grace when that scenario does come up. You will forgive. You will find yourself loving more. Amen. Amen. And grace is like that answer for everything. Yeah. It really is, amen. amen. Why did God give you? Because of his grace. <clears throat> his goodness. Amen? That's good. Okay, all right. Um, okay, amen. So uh, that faith should not be in the wisdom of men, but in what? The power of God. Moving right along for six. However, we speak wisdom among those who are mature, yet not the wisdom of this age, nor the rulers of this age who are coming to nothing. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages for our glory, which one, of, which one of the rulers of this age knew? Uh, for not sure, which none of the rulers of this age knew. For had they known, they would have, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But it is written, "I has not seen nor ear um, heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love Him." But God has revealed it, revealed them to us through His Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. Mm -hmm. For what man knows the thing of a man except the spirit of the man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God except the spirit of God. Now we have received, not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. So God does not want you to be ignorant. He wants you to know. Yes. You've received the spirit that is not from the world, which is destruction, confusion, limitations, and problems, and stress, but the spirit of God. Who searches the deep things of God for what? Spirit. What, what man knows any man except the spirit that's in the man. So we have the spirit of God which tells us all the things that God wants to give you. Yeah. Freely. Mm -hmm. yeah. The Holy Spirit is the only one that's going to confirm the gift, the charisma. Yeah. Amen. The free gift of God's grace. All the blessings. Amen. All of them. Amen. Not Amen. some. 
Not just some. Amen. See, like there's a blessing for, for her David, right? There's a blessing for me too, right? A blessing for Chanel. No, all the blessings. Yes. We're all blessed. Amen. 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 And the Holy Spirit wants you to know that you're blessed. He doesn't want you to walk around in ignorance not knowing. He wants you to know. Amen. Right? So we can think outside the box. Amen. Because the Spirit of God will not let you stay in a box. He'll take you outside the box. Amen? Open mind. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Let me read on verse 13. These things we also speak not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man, check this out, but the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. Okay? But he who is spiritual judges all things, yet himself is rightly judged by no one. Interesting. Amen? For who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him, but we have the mind of Christ. Yes. Amen? Yes. You have the mind of Christ. So you have the ability to make different choices in all of your relationships. Mm. You can do it. Amen? Yes. You can change. Whoa. Mm -hmm. You can. What does this mean? This means you're blessed. Mm -hmm. Because you're blessed, you can change and you can make better decisions. Not just that. You have the power now, because you're blessed, to change the way you think about yourself. Amen. Amen? Why? Because the Spirit of God won't let you live in that box anymore. Amen? So you have to stop beating yourself up, because yeah. you can now. You can stop beating yourself yes. up. Amen? You can stop sitting there and wallowing in condemnation. The Holy Spirit won't allow you to do that anymore. That's right. Amen? Because you have the mind of Christ. And when the Son is set free, my brother and my sister. Yes. Amen? Yes. Amen, church? Yes. You have the mind of Christ, church. Rise up and live. Yes. Amen. Don't sit around depressed, angry, Amen. worried. Church, don't worry. Yes. Don't worry. Amen. Whatever the scenario is, God is in control. That's right. And everything That's right. That's negative, everything bad, everything ugly, God Ooh. works out for the good. Yes. Yes. For your good. Amen. Amen. All you can do is stop and say, I am so glad. You know what? It's interesting. Me and, me and my friend Cameron were talking about this. God is good. Yeah. We all want to function and have at 100%. And most of us got about 80%. It's called the 80-20 rule. Mm -hmm. Most of us have 80% of everything God has given us, mm -hmm. and we're upset about the 20% that we don't have. Exactly. You got 80. <laughs> Hallelujah. And you tripping over the 20%? My <laughs> right? we, we feel like the 20% is more than the 80% sometimes. Oh, yeah. Look at what God has brought you from. Amen? Hallelujah. If that was the 20%, man, then move on. Oh, you know? Right? Look where God has brought you from. No. Amen, church? Think about it. God's blessed you with 80%, and you want 20 more. Amen? Look at where you are today. Yes. Sometimes, yes. church, you got to remember what God has brought you from. Amen. To realize that you're blessed yes. today. Amen. We're waiting for the 80, the 20% more of a blessing when God's already blessed us with enough right now. All right. Maybe 20% right. will come tomorrow. Master maybe Lord next month. Maybe next year. But praise the Lord, you're not where you were. Amen. You're not under abuse anymore. You're not being told you're a drunk anymore. You're not being told that you're ugly and you're not being told that you're a drug addict and can't make good decisions. You're not being told that you don't know how to manage your finances no more. You're not being told you're a loser. You're not being told you're fat. That's right. Amen. Think about it. Look where God has brought you from. Praise the Lord. God is good, right? But you have the mind of Christ. Yeah. Amen? And Jesus is your wisdom. Yeah. He is your wisdom. Let me tell you, church, he's your wisdom. He was Solomon's wisdom. He's your wisdom today. Yes. Any, any business adventures you go on, when, if it's just how to discipline your children, if it's how to love your wife and your husband, if it's just how to be a, a more uh, kind person, less agitated, consult Christ for wisdom. Yeah. Amen? And... Don't count yourself out. How many loaves do you have? Mm. What do you have? You know? Well, guess what? That little bit in the hands of Jesus multiplies with 12 baskets left over. <laughs> and that, don't forget the gift that you have, the gift of the Spirit, the charisma, yeah. the grace that God has given you to prosper you, to cause you to succeed. Amen? 
Church, you are you're, you're not abandoned, you're not forgotten. Amen. I feel the need to just, you know, just relieve you today of the negative words that were spoken over you today. Amen. Amen. Just close your eyes today. Father God, we just thank you today, Jesus. Father God, I come against the negative words that were said against these people today. I cast it down in Jesus' name. Lord God, for your word says that you so love the world that you gave your only begotten son. So God, you love us. Today, as believers, we're only going to focus on how much you love us. God, you're good enough. If nobody loves me, I know you do. Thank you, Jesus. But your grace is so good. You're going to restore. I hear that God's going to restore relationships in this building. As for someone, God's going to restore relationships. God's going to I see God remove some people. Someone here, God, remove people out of their life. These people weren't good for you. God, remove them. He's going to restore you with new friends who are going to be a blessing and add joy to your life. Amen. I see you. There's some people here who've lost their family. Um, the Holy Spirit is saying He's going to restore your family. He's going to restore your family. I'm hearing that He's going to restore your family with grace. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. There's someone here who um, just isn't satisfied. They just, it, it's, it's loneliness, but they're not satisfied because they're lonely. God's going to replace your loneliness with much company, amen, and satisfy your, your thirsty soul. I hear the Holy Spirit saying, don't look for people, don't look to people for validation. Look to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We serve a good God, amen. Trust in you, Lord.